welcome to this video on creating a wildlife pond in your garden. This video will look at the project that I've been doing at home over the space of the last six months from first digging on Boxing Day to escape the Christmas madness to six months later the water's cleared, the wildlife has arrived, the plants are taking hold. So the videos will look at how we constructed it, we'll look at why we chose the site, we'll look at the materials we used and how much the project cost. We'll look at the planting in and around the edge. Most importantly, we'll talk about the wildlife that has come into the pond very, very quickly. So enjoy. So these are shots of the garden as it was before when, when we purchased the property. It's just the bottom of the garden and as you can see it's just been used up until now as a vegetable patch and um, as I'm not a huge vegetable growing guy more ornamentals I wanted to put it to better use. Um, this is obviously taken in the winter when nothing is in leaf along the boundary fence there are some small trees crab apples and cherries and stuff so there is some cover um, it's not totally open but it is a reasonably open site and I've always wanted a pond and this is gonna be this is my new my new pond I've never done the pond before and this is therefore going to be it's trial and error so I'm just going for it slowly I know that some things will work and some things won't work but just trying it and having a go and this has all been dug by hand I started this on Boxing Day actually when I wanted to escape the Christmas madness so I dug the first tier out on Boxing Day and I've just dug the second and the third tier out today and got rid of the soil. I'm going to regrade it elsewhere in the garden. I've always wanted a pond. We had them as kids and used to spend hours. We had a pond with a, a, a bridge spanning it, only a small one, but I'd spend hours as a kid just uh, led onto the pond, looking into the water, giving the water snails and the tadpoles, you know, a nightmare, just prodding them and poking them and yeah, I was a cool kid. we find it today it was filled two months ago so it's had two months now to settle in and start to clear um, some of the initial planting has gone in and around it but there's obviously as you can see an awful lot more to do but this is the new pond two months in so I'll just give you a quick tour start at this end so this is the beach end which I've just filled with basic 
10 and 20 mil gravel. I plan to put some nicer stones in here in due course. Um, I've got some larger hamstone around the edge, a few little planting pockets, and just easy access via the rocks over there for anything that wants to get out and to get out. This area was dug to the same depth and then filled right up with gravel so there's there's a reasonable amount of gravel in there which is built up to the level that I want it. As we look around we've got two lilies there which were luckily for me freebies from another pond clearance. You can't beat free plants. Um, they're both white flowering lilies and as you can see they've they have been flowering already and there's more to come on them which is great. I think the feature that I most like is this little jetty. I'm calling it a jetty because it sounds a bit posher. Um, this is the jetty that I built. Um, it's nice to be able to sit out over the pond. So this is made out of softwood um, sleepers, five of them in total. Uh, 2.4 length. You can see underneath here we have a concrete path. So they were on a solid foundation at that end already. They've been fixed underneath, if you can see, with a 4x4 timber that runs along the length of them there that end stable. There is no supports from the jetty down. It's purely supported by that concrete path and at the back end cavity. At the back end what I've done is I've sunk in either corner two four by four softwood posts, dug them into the ground to about 15 inches, concreted them in and fixed in that end and a 4x4 post at the back screwed in this end so that will keep it nice and secure, keep it from moving um, certainly for the time being and it's nice to be able to come out over it stand over or sit or lie on here. This is my one bit of extravagance. This um, water lily is purchased from a local water lily farm near here and it's called Black Princess. This was for me an extravagant purchase because it was about 40 quid. There's a little water beetle. But this, is, this water lily is really, really dark, dark red. Kind of the reddest one you can get. So that is my one special purchase from here. And the rest of the plants, apart from a few of the marginals, as I say, have been three bees from elsewhere. The lilies have been three bees. And a lot of the planting around the edge, we've got some Hakonicloas moving along, we've got some white Astilbe Deutschland, um, a huge hosta. Those are all free from other people's gardens, one of the benefits of being a gardener. And what I'm hoping will take off, if it doesn't prove too hot here, is I've planted a Japanese Acer looking a little bit singed at the moment but hopefully in time 
this one will grow bigger and form a real feature plant over this edge of the pool. Again, this was a freebie as well, so happy days. Talk a little bit about the stone around the edge. The stone around the edge was all on site already from a wall I took down at the front of the house. I didn't want stone all the way around and none of it has been concreted in. I decided not to concrete it in and the reason for that is because it would just give me another job to do and I'm a bit of a procrastinator. I don't have a lot of time to do these things and to be honest I just wanted to get it done. So all those stones are now in on the edge none of them are concreted i've got the option to do that in the future if i want um, some of them were as you will see sunk in the water down here that was done for two reasons one aesthetics i think it looks quite nice the second reason was those were where some major folds were in the liner so they were placed there also to help hide those major folds but yeah it's looking really good of digging out the area it cost me nothing it was all dug out by hand I could have got some with a digger I don't really have access for it and I didn't really want to pay for that but I knew when I started the project that I could lose all of the soil elsewhere in the garden so I had to didn't have to consider costs for getting rid of soil. So the actual digging out cost me nothing. I think it's important to say that this project wasn't done on the cheap. I think if we do a project like this on the cheap, then oh I found the nymph. I found the dragonfly nymph. Let's go and have a look. I knew I'd see it. He's going to be close to climbing soon. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. <clears throat> it hasn't been done on the cheap, this one, but it's been... You've got to do these things properly in order for it to last. But at the same time, you don't have to spend an absolute fortune. So yeah, digging out cost me nothing. Um, the biggest cost for any pond is going to be the material you use to line it. I did quite a bit of research and I decided to go for a more expensive option because I wanted a liner that I knew would last. First of all, I got a fabric underlay and laid that over the area. Now this, I'm very lucky here that this ground has virtually no stone in. I dug this whole area out and there's just no stone in it and there's no big protruding roots. So I didn't line the pond with sand or anything. I just used um, the pond underlay 
and actually double layered it and I'm hoping that will suffice and the main liner was a Firestone rubber and I think for this pond is about five, five and a half metres long by about four and a half metres across and allowing for the, the size that you have to buy I think the cost of the liner and the underlay came to just shy of £500 in the end which I was reasonably happy with the cost of filling it I had wonderful ideas about you know, collecting rainwater and, and filling it naturally which I have done to a degree but I soon realised that to fill a pond of this size with natural water would have taken an age so this was filled just by the tap I haven't got the bill for that yet so I have no idea what that will come to but I don't really care as I've said already most of the planting in and around the edge has been free from other people who have ponds or gardens where they're getting rid of things so that costs nothing um, I purchased a few marginal plants sort of five six pounds each and my big special water lily um, black princess the timber for the boards that I'm sitting on uh, where did I get these? I got these from my local fencing place. I think it probably cost like, 60, 70 quid for all of the timber. And the stone around the edge was what I had on site as well. So I think probably all in all it's cost with plants, timber, I would say in the region of six to seven hundred pounds to do this. And of course there's lots more planting to go around the edge. There's lots more work to do here with moving soil around and you know when it's all finished they will be planting all around the edge, running into the water. So a bit more money to spend there, but I'm sure I'll find some freebies along the way. You know, I've never built a pond before, I don't profess to be an expert, this is not a how-to video because I haven't got those skills. This has just been a purely DIY project. I knew the most critical thing was getting the levels right so that you don't see the exposed liner around the edges. Now at the moment you can see liner and for me that is at the moment because we're in the summer we haven't had rain here for about two weeks and I think the natural height of this pond is going to be another few inches higher so I'm not worried at the moment about seeing liner around the edge and on this side it's reasonably even what you can see tiny weeny mistake has been made just over this back corner here in here where there is a bit of a dip so a couple of weeks ago when this pond was much fuller and the water level was almost right up to that top level of the stone it was spilling over in this corner so this corner is a little bit low um, it's it's not a big problem it's a minor thing if I was a professional doing this and I built it for a customer I think they might have an issue with it but it's not a big thing for me it's just an observation I knew there would be something go wrong with the project and as annoying as it is it is what it is um, so that's really the only thing so far One of the things that has really impressed me about doing this is just how quickly wildlife 
has come into the pond. It's quite amazing, actually. I've heard a few times that when you put in a pond, you'll be surprised by how quickly things will come in. But it has surprised even me, being slightly prepared for it. Whilst we were actually filling the pond, within 20 minutes, there were yeah, what I call pond skaters on the surface. There were little flies and bees, well, drowning in it actually. But things were here immediately. I brought in some oxygenating weed from another client's pond and with that I brought in maybe half a dozen water snails. But now a couple of months on, the snails in here just seem to have, have exploded in number. So whether they've come in naturally or whether they've had babies already, I suspect it'd be the first one. So there's loads of snails, water beetles in here. They've just appeared from nowhere. I have no idea how they came and how they got here. But there's lots of little water beetles. The other thing that I introduced here was tadpoles. I was lucky that at the time that we were filling the pond with water, it was around the spawning time, and I had another friend who was filling in his pond. Tiny little, tiny little pond, and he let me have a lot of very, very infant tadpoles, which is sort of just hatched. And I was a bit concerned about how they would take going from that environment where they had hatched and been into a new environment with fresh water which was from tap water in the end I was a bit concerned about how they would take but they had just thrived and most of them now are at the stage where they're starting to develop their back legs so Fingers crossed, we've got lots of frogs that are going to be coming out of here soon and revisiting to spawn um, late winter of next year. So hopefully we'll have a thriving frog population in the garden from the get-go. The other thing that we've seen almost straight away is dragonfly nymphs. I reckon there's two or, or three dragonfly nymphs which are in here. And you see them come up to the surface, stick their asses in the air, well I think it's their asses, and then go back down again. So I'm assuming that they will be at some point soon crawling out and hatched, which will be ace. So yeah, it has been quite amazing. How, how quickly stuff comes in and you see something different every time you come down here which is what I wanted from a pond just somewhere that you can sit and look and see what's going on and it's been fantastic to see it develop in the way that it has